It's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, time for us to check out the pages. We call it Off the Press. GD Johnson is on standby. GD Johnson, it's good to have you join us this Friday morning. Okay, so um, hopefully we're able to connect with him and, and we have a smooth uh, connection and conversation. i like to start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And as always, the focus would be on the top stories. Uh, looking at the banner caption, APC Ketaka Committee divided in dilemma over national convention. CECPC towing Oshomale's uh, path. That's what the DG of the PGF is quoted to say. NLNG to supply 100% of its LPG production to Nigeria's market. Lagos Ibadan, Shagamu Bini roads for inauguration before the end of the year, according to the president. Buhari pays condolence visit to late Shone Khan's family in Lagos um, 2023, not central legislators, and does Yahaya Bello's presidential bid. Anambra Soludo appoints Izekwesili to head 80-man transition team. And talking about the suit in River State, week goes after illegal refineries operators. Killings of 15 persons in political crisis, retaliatory attacks not acceptable. That's according to President Muhammad Buhari. And just before we move away, we check out this one, 395 mutant polio viruses or virus cases recorded in 27 states FCT, according to health authorities. That's the much we can take on the Daily Independent. All right, and now on the Punch newspapers this morning. Amotek Uncom, Southwest Forest for fleeing Northwest terrorists. Ikite Amotek collaborating with hunters, farmers, forest guards to fish out criminals and bandits. The president's recent statement shows he doesn't understand how, understand how serious insecurity is, says Afenifer. NL NLNG suspends cooking gas exports, channels 100% to domestic market. And will present presidential candidates for Southeast, says Ohaneze. We can also find here on the punch, Igbo have investments everywhere. We are not part of Biafra, says Umahi. Robert kills colleague, Amotekun rescues 17 victims in Ondo. And a court orders in term for feature of 110 million naira traced to a teacher and accomplices. A few others this morning. Uh, North Central lawmakers back Buni endorse Bello. And NNPC and others may reconstruct uh, federal roads in Ogun State, says uh, Buhari. Um, I think those are the stories that we can share on the punch this morning. All right, away from the punch, let's check out the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, the banner caption says, Battle for 2023 hots up. And underneath you have North Central legislators pass vote of confidence in Buni and Doris Bello for president. Drop your ambition, let's jointly fix APC. Stakeholders tell uh, Tinubu Kalu Umahi and Deli Momodu informs PDP of presidential bid. Oha Bungwa joins race and group kings, kicks over Umahi's ambition. This are riders underneath. Eze Kwesili leads Soludo's 80-man transition committee. We will consider tax credit scheme for reco reconstruction of Shagamu, Ikorudu, and uh, Idiroko highways. Uh, this is according to President Mohamed Buhari. Inaugurate five projects in Ogun State and comments Abiodu. Restore dignity, respect of Yoruba traditional institution, Ghani Adams tell Obas and governors and WHO recommends two new drugs to treat COVID-19 patients. And uh, away from that, Ibadan High Chiefs drop Obashib title, agree with Makinde. We're in Nigeria to serve public, uh, public conversations. This is according to Twitter. Falana Ozako Z May speaks on uh, suing federal government over businesses hit by ban. And this is some of the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, and now on the um, daily or the leadership newspapers, convention delay, presidential declarations deepen APC, APC uh, crisis. PDP DG accuses Buni Committee of holding members captive. Our presidential aspirants are selfish, say stakeholders. 
As Akwesile head Soludo's 80-man transition committee and also federal government inaugurates EFCC board six years after. Scores killed in Bauchi Quara road crashes. And also technology, not foot soldiers needed to defeat terrorists, say veterans. Uh, Jide Johnson, thanks once again for joining us. Um, I believe that we can get straight into the discussions this morning with uh, the you know story from Anambra State and the transition committee that has been set up by uh, Professor Chukuma Soludo uh, with OBS Equity head in it, and of course having a couple of other you know pretty interesting individuals um, on that team also. L let's get your thoughts on that one first of all. Well, um, it's a, well, um, the, the inauguration will take place on the seventeenth of March, I think. Professor Sudu is setting the ball rolling. Um, uh, I'm also uh, in support of the chairperson of, of the of the transition committee. However, the, the numbers seem to be too too large for me. That's my that's my view concerning concerning the transition committee. The welcome development is important for him to assess what is the state of Anambra state economy, the state of the infrastructure, the state of things in Anambra. However, is the, the large the large number. How are those committee going to arrive at their decision? Someone said, if you want, if you don't want to get things done, just set up a committee. And if you want to waste your time, call for a meeting. I think that the um, seven person, maximum fifteen person com uh, transition committee will have will have sufficed in this in this direction. But the welcome development that at least. Okay, um, let's take our attention to the Nigerian Tribune and uh, look at the concerns of Ghani Adams saying, restore dignity, respect of Yoruba traditional institution. And over time, you know, traditional institution in Nigeria, uh, some people have said that they've lost their value for whatever reason. Maybe they have dabbled into politics and other persons have queried the role of traditional, the traditional institution as well as traditional rulers. I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria, we have, we have contra there's a contradiction concerning the system of government we want to practice. In a republic you don't have, in a republic, Powers belong to the people. There is no place for traditional, traditional rulers. And uh, we said we are Federal Republic of Nigeria, and at the same time we still have traditional institutions. Um, so if you look at what what relevance do these traditional rulers have on offer to the system, they become they become political in in their in their approach and in their decision making and in their administering of their various territories. Uh, and then you see that they are even subjected to the control of the governor. We have a case going on in Oyo State now, and if you check one of the headlines in the newspaper, whereby the Olubadon died by tradition and by culture. After the first day or the second day, you know the next Olubadon will be announced. However, because of the politicization that happened under a team of people, we had new um, new kingdoms were created and people were elevated, which altered the existing structure. Now, in one of the headlines, Nick Power said that those of us need to revert back to our chiefs. We saw what happened in Kano with Kanduji with the creation of five new emirates from the ex from the original uh, Kanu Kanu Emirate Council. So, as far as I'm concerned, the original institutions have what's the relevance, what's the value? We thought that they would be custodian of culture, and then they will be they, they will be a sort of control mechanism for the political class, and they will be able to serve as watchdog and be able to call the political class to the other. We have a situation whereby it is the traditional rulers that are going to the state house. In the past, it used to be the governors and the presidents that used to go and meet traditional rulers, but the reverse is the case now: the traditional rulers that goes to Asho Rock that goes to so I agree with him in totality that. The value of um, the traditional rulers has been eroded. Now, Judy Johnson, um, on the point this morning, the big story there says Amotekun Kom Southwest Forest for fleeing Northwest terrorists. Um, is that, you know, a scary headline? Uh, so, sometimes the problem we have in Nigeria and globally is the way journalists write their stories, the narrative. 
they give to their to their story. Now it's you don't see people calling it your fisherman or Igbo traders. Uh, so you said Fulani X men. All all X men in Nigeria are not Fulani. Now when you begin to use those pigmentations and identity, you begin to create problems, division in in I'm not ever come south west looking for for terrorists. It's okay, but using that narrative northwest, you want to create enmity between the southwest and the northwest. I think that um, that journalist did not do good service to this nation. All right, but I mean the the you know part you know for for this whole story is really the presence of these persons in the southwest. And if that poses a threat to the security of the Southwest, will Amatekun be able or capable um, of, um, well, of well, holding it together? From, you, from, 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 from all indications and from the result we've got, they've got in over time, you've discovered that um, to a large extent they've been able to reduce the onslaught of the crisis between farmers and elders and the issue of kidnapping and abduction that, that characterized the Southwest. When you recall when Chifolu Falai was when Chulufaya was kidnapped in his farm, uh, which led to funding imposed on one of the tele telecom sector in 2015. So I think every state needs to have a sort of community policing. It's important. Policing is community. Once you have community policing, people in the community, they know one another. So it's easier for people to combat crime when we have that kind of system in place. So, but are you thinking that the community police uh, should be integrated with the, I mean, the security architecture no, that we have, like you know, that, the police, just that the Nigerian we, police? We are living or in self be delusion and self-deception. Now, you have the Isba police in the north. You have local security network in Lagos State, which you call Neighborhood Watch, which was established by Colin Bubamawa when he was governor of Lagos, when he was military administrator, rather. Now, you have Amoteco in the southwest, so one way or the other, and then you have Rapid Response Squad in Lagos State, which is a specialized uh, unit of the Nigerian police to combat and deal with crime in Lagos. So, to a large extent, we have some measure operationally. It's not that we don't have it in our, in our rule books, we don't have it in our constitution, we don't have it in, 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 in legislation. But somehow, each of these states, which of the 36 states of the Federation have one form of community policing or the other. So if the earlier we recognize this and we legislate on this and it becomes like a, the better for us in this country. Okay, uh, let's quickly check out the Daily Independent. He says the APC Keteka Committee divided in dilemma over national convention. And uh, some persons are still querying the capacity of the APC to come uh, to put his foot down ahead of the 2023 elections? Well, it's, we, we, we you know we have highlighted this, we've pointed out it. As 2023 is approaching, the stakes are becoming higher. Now, one of the easiest ways for you to break through from poverty in Nigeria is for you to get access to public office. And one of the ways to also increase your wealth is for you to enjoy government patronage. So, the stakes are higher. As we are approaching 2023, it still becomes higher. And he pointed out that the APC need to have done this convention since last year. And by all indications, if they are not careful, they might not do this convention. They might not. Because you could see the various crises. One, there are crises at the state level. In most states, you have two or three parallel conventions. In Lagos State, for, for, for example, for the first time, you have parallel convention, three parallel conventions. You have in open state, you have in Canada, just yesterday, the court ruled in favor of Shekaru, Shekaru's, Ibrahim Shekaru's faction, um, where Kandiji's faction lost out. So, if you go from north to east to west to south, you see that APC is the devil with crisis at the state level, and due to their inability to manage those crises, it has snowballed into a national crisis, which is itself is affecting the national convention. Having a gap committee we pointed that it's an aberration in the first instance it's an aberration and APC is playing with with, with, with with the major problem because if they go ahead not to have their na national convention they might not be able to present candidates for 2023 election if they do they will lose those 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 even if they win the election they will lose at the courts 
just like it happened just like it happened in Zamfara State, it happened in River State, it happened in Bayesa State, because in all of those states, APC still have won. In River State, they did not present candidates. Same with Zamfara State. They had issue in Adamawa State, 2019. I, I, I hope they will learn from the mistakes they've made in the past and they'll move forward from signing that. But the more we are approaching 2023, the more it becomes difficult for them to put their house in order. All right. And also, um, something that seems to be lost in the conversation lately is uh, the idea of a southeastern president. Uh, but on the punch well, this morning. You know, I, I, I said it. If you want to do the turn by turn democracy you have been practicing since, since 1999, if you want to be fair, it should be the southeast that should present the presidential candidate. But however, however, it the principle of rotation is not in 1999 caution. It was a creation of the PDP. It was a creation of the PDP. Um, and we will see whether APC will adopt, adopt that principle moving forward. Uh, if we want to do the turn by turn, um, at least the Southwest have, has had a shot. The Northwest has had a shot. The South South has had a shot with Jonathan. I think um, the South S you have, but politics is beyond is beyond this um, permutation. There are a lot of stakes that are involved. There are a lot of interest. And power is not given to you on the platter of gold. You negotiate, you network, and then you play your games appropriately and accordingly. Understanding the dynamics of power. I, and um, I'm not too sure that um, people from the South is just to tell ourselves the basic truth. Understand the dynamics of power in Nigerian politics. They are too individualistic and too republican in nature. There's no question in terms of what should be the approach of the region to national politics. So who is the who is the presidential candidate? Umai, Okorocha, Kalu, Ojuzo Kalu. So the uh, or Peter will be. So that's there, there's there's no there's no organized concerted effort from the service. They are too individualistic and republican in their nature, and you can't blame them for that. That's the structure of their society. But moving forward, they need to organize themselves and understand the dynamics of Nigerian politics and align their approach, their strategy with the Nigerian politics in order for them to make any 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 we concerning having shot at the president. Yeah. Okay, um let's also look at another one. It's still on uh the Daily Independent. It says three hundred and ninety five mutant poliovirus cases recorded in twenty seven states. I mean, we're still having to deal with uh, Lassa fever. Now we're talking about polio case. Yeah, I think we took our eyes off the board concerning polio. I think Nigeria was certified polio free. Yes. Uh, and I think that we need to turn back to the basic. It's important. It's important for government to show the same emphasis we have and the same approach we have adopted to deal with polio in the past and the same approach we are using to deal with COVID-19. In one of the stories, we discovered that the 16 year old cannot take the COVID-19 COVID vaccine. So we should have that concert, concerted effort because the public health crisis, if we still have polio cases in Nigeria, I think the, what we, the approach we adopted in the past, which was holistic, which was, which was holistic, which was comprehensive, should be the approach we should. We can't take our eyes off the board. The vaccine, government must keep investing in this vaccine in order for us to act. Because if we don't deal with the issue now, it becomes a national problem in the future. All right. Um, I think we can wrap up with, you know, moving away from um, the uh, papers this morning. I think it's, uh, it seems we've gone across all of them. And just get you to quickly share your thoughts on uh, something that we will be talking about a lot later this morning. And that is the um, opposition um, parties across Nigeria. Um, some people what? have said the opposition parties across the country. You know, there's... Yeah. There's uh, feelings that they haven't worked hard enough to deserve votes in 2023. Um, and that uh, they being simply present, you know, would not be enough to convince Nigerians the other way. Um, so well, what would your assessment be, you know, with regards how hard they have worked um, to ensure that Nigerians understand that they, you know, deserve, you know, somehow, some way a shot in 2023? Well, the opposition would take shape after the primaries. 
the opposition, there are no political parties in Nigeria. There is no ruling party. There is no opposition party. Once they win the election, you see people cross carpeting left, right, and center. However, once the election is around the corner, uh, where their interests could not be served, you see they divide into two equally matched political parties. So it is the party that is able to manage the crisis. Its convention crisis is primary better. Is the party that will, that will win 2020. We can't say for sure which party will win. Whether it's we are not even sure whether some of this party will exist in 2023. For example, hypothetically, if which is not able to put this house in order, what happens? You have splinter groups. And probably everybody will go and be to your tent to Israel. Or there will be a third force. And people that are not that are dissatisfied in PDP and people that are dissatisfied in APC will come together and form third force. Let's see how it unfolds. However, when people talk about opposition in Nigeria, there are no political parties because there are no ideology. What Nigeria political class are interested in spreading their nest. The moment the election is conducted and winner is declared, every one of them will just jump and join the winner. Everybody loves the winner. That's the principle of Nigerian politics. Nobody loves opposition in Nigeria. Because there's no politics of ideology and principle. All right. Judy Johnson, thanks uh, as always for joining us this morning and uh, sharing it's, your thoughts with us on these stories. It's a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. Have a great day ahead. And uh, of course, uh, we'll, we'll go on a short break and share with you what happened on this day in history a couple of years ago, actually, we're going back as far as 1973. Uh, to share with you a little bit of history and right after that our first major conversation for today and that's you know from a conversation that i just started with jide johnson um the opposition parties in nigeria how ready are they really we'll talk about that after uh, we get back